Hi friends, I'm Scott Giles and welcome to Power Talk, my podcast here on Facebook Live and YouTube. I cover topics related to hypnotic coaching, spirituality, and the hypnotic arts and sciences in general. If you'd like to know more about my professional work or sign up for my free newsletter, Power Lines, check out my website, which I'll tag at the end of this video. Well, today I want to talk about money, specifically the importance of having a philosophy about money. Now, in our society, Money is one of the major ways energy is transmitted from one person to another or from people to institutions and causes that they care about. Now, it's been said that money is the root of all evil. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. But I don't believe that's correct. It's the excessive love of money that causes problems. There's nothing wrong with having a healthy relationship to wealth. Now, a healthy relationship to wealth or money means that you use it as a resource to build a good life for yourself. Now, by that, I don't mean buying a lot of toys or living a life of hedonistic dissipation. I mean putting a healthy life for yourself together. There should be pleasure, but also the fulfillment of meaningful work. Balanced relationships should be in there, as well as the opportunity for good health. Philosophically, The big deal is to have a good philosophy, by which I mean not being owned by your possessions or your money. To do that, you need to determine what the threshold will be for you in your own experience and life for what is an appropriate amount of wealth in your life. And that's going to be a very individual thing based on a person's temperament and the life situation in which they find themselves. For example, I'm something of a minimalist, but I have a deep appreciation for quality. So I don't own a lot of stuff, but what I do own tends to be in high quality. And I'm comfortable with that, and I don't feel a need to have more. I am content. I have enough for what I need to cover the basics and to invest in the things I believe in. The lesson here really came home for me when my first marriage ended. My late spouse was someone who took a lot of pride in possessions, especially showy possessions. So we had, for example, a lot of silver, flatware, chafing dishes, trays, pitchers, and so on. She would fill her closet with designer clothing and so on. And when that relationship ended, I realized that I had a house full of stuff that I didn't want. And maintenance on that stuff, hey, silver takes a lot of energy to keep polished, was occupying time that I I really wanted to use for other things. So I undertook a grand simplification that I still feel good about. I gave all of that silver to a church auction. I simplified my wardrobe, basically settling on a uniform that I could wear daily and that's easy to care for. I did not want to be owned by my things. Now, I've had a lot of role models for this over the years, but the most influential thinker in this regard was a Buddhist leader named Thich Nhat Hanh now recently deceased. 
Now, of course, he lived in a monastery and lived a life of voluntary simplicity, so he's sort of an extreme case. But his writing on money was that one needs to cover the basics, but beyond that, money should be your servant, not the other way around. And that really, really hit me. Now, examples of what not to do. Someone who is so focused on wealth accumulation that they take no days off, no vacations, become a workaholic, neglect their relationships, relect, neglect their personal development, everything is subserviated to amassing money. I've, I've had clients who have told me that their life goal is to make a lot of money. Another example, someone who has little money, but who gets into debt to provide the things they don't need, but do want. And they end up with a toxic amount of debt. And a final example of what not to do is someone who is so obsessional about money, they keep track of every cent with a toxic overfocus spending all of their time squeezing out the best bargain, including foregoing nice things they could afford to give themselves in favor of things they don't like as much, but which are selected because they're cheaper. Now, the philosophical person does none of these things. Instead, one figures out an affordable lifestyle and seeks to enjoy what is within that lifestyle to enjoy. If Caribbean cruises are off the table as unaffordable, pleasure is taken by other things that can be afforded. Money serves to build enjoyment of life, not to dominate that life, and that is a healthy money philosophy. So enjoy your life within the bounds set by your financial means. You don't spend every waking moment trying to accumulate more wealth than you really need to be happy, nor do you become so frugal you deprive yourself of happiness that you can afford. Money is to be your servant, not the other way around. The philosophical person is never owned by their possessions. Things exist to serve the person. And I recommend this as an important step on the path to happiness. Hey, thank you for your time and attention today. I'll be back next week with another talk on a different subject. I'd like to invite you to join me. As always, it does help me if you let others know about my work and my videos. So please like, share, and subscribe. And if I can be of help to you, feel free to reach out through email, my website, or my Patreon channel. Have a great week.